Steph, appreciate yeah. it. How you been, my man? I'm blessed, man. I can't complain. Enjoying the playoffs here in New York, hometown, homegrown, beautiful time for basketball, being here to see the Knicks doing what they're doing, playing in um, the playoff, fighting to try to go into the Eastern Conference final to try to get back into the championship after so long. So it's a it's a beautiful thing, and it's a, it's a beautiful time. The Rangers... Like, wow, I went to the Ranger game. That was the best. Like, that was – hockey is – like, that's a whole other story. But hockey is definitely by far the hardest sport ever to play. It's not even close. What would <laughs> Stephon Marbury look like if we ever got you on the ice? Oh, my God. I don't know. <laughs> I just want to I, I just want to be able to, like, be on, a, like, the side and then slide in through the middle and then, like, man, it's it's amazing. It's, it's like watching soccer. It's like watching soccer on ice and basketball at the same time. And then the level of focus and commitment, like somebody hits you not to hit somebody with a stick. Like, and then I learned don't hit the goalie. You hit yeah. the goalie, it's over with. Like all of the different things. I'm like, yo, I love these rules. It's like gladiator style on ice with, with a puck. Like this, can you imagine sw swinging that thing and like that? It's, it's I, crazy. I would fall flat on my face. I'm a huge hockey fan, and in the NBA, oh, man. man, I'm loving it. We don't see any fights in the NBA anymore. In hockey, you touch the Yo, goalie, all hell breaks loose. You're it's right. It's over with. It's over. My friend, I brought him, Jacob. Uh, Jacob, he, 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 look, let me tell you, I brought this kid to the. I brought them. He he never he he never been to a Ranger game, and he he loved the Rangers, and I didn't know that he loved hockey, and he was explaining the game to me. I was like, oh my god, I wanted somebody to teach me about the game because you know you watching the game and you don't really know what's going on. It's boring, but when you know what's going on and you into it and you learn the like, it was easy to learn the rules. He was like, it's like basketball. Once he said that, it automatically clicked, and then I started watching. And everybody jumped up at the same time. The congressman from, I mean, the government governor Christie, he was at, he was there. Dolan, every, it was just, it was, it was incredible. It was great. Well, let me get back to the hardware. To Stephon Marbury is yeah, here with us. <laughs> you got to describe your emotions. Like we saw them last night, but when you see Jalen Brunson pop off for forty-four points and win Game Five, wow. take me through how you kind of process what you're seeing. We're seeing magic. We're seeing positive energy in New York being manifested. Rick Brunson, he played for the Knicks. His son, he brought him here. He brought him and allowed him to go on the court, running on the court, shooting. He's heard those loud noises, those cheers when those big shots was made at the end of the game. So he's familiar with that feeling. He understands it. He was built for it. And for him to be um, this positive and this this so, you know, so deeply humble, you can tell that it comes from his parents, you know, from being guided in a, in, a, in a proper way and, you know, speaking and thinking and never making ex excuses or mistakes. I mean, I'm never making excuses about the mistakes that he's made, owning up to it in New York, knowing that that's like, that's, that's fortune, you know, and being able to see him do what he did in a pivotal game, it only shows that, you know, him being recognized as a superstar in his league, you know, he earned it. He earned the stripes doing it in a Mecca and Madison Square Garden. Game five, a pivotal game. This is the this is to have two more shots. They only got one shot. You know, we would have been the ones going into their home court if we would lose this game last night. And going into going in the Indy, we already know it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to do that. As Pacers know, it's going to be hard to beat us in the Pacers and then come into the Garden and beat us. Come on, stop it! Whatever's going on, everything got to it got to freeze. If that happens, it's a Game Seven Indy. Everything got to freeze, and everybody got to pay pay focus to that. I'm wherever is wherever I'm at. I, I'm I gotta tell them like, look, I gotta stop. <laughs> this is important. <laughs> this is for the city. <laughs> I gotta go. And my Sorry, favorite my part, life. my favorite part about this team is just the toughness. Like I could watch this team play any day just because of how tough of a group they are with all these injuries too. Grit, grind, like Bird. I can't even say enough about him. That just shows 
the preparation that Tibbs, when you trust him, trust your coach. That's our leader. We got to trust his decisions, right? Like, like for so many years, they trust, they trusted Bill Belichick, right? There's a reason why they trust him. They trust him because he was the leader. And then he showed why consistently over and over why this is what we're building. We're trying to get towards that. Tibbs is the guy, right? Tibbs has everyone prepped and prepared, focused, with understanding, a guy, Burke, he sits on the bench. You think he don't want to play? It's the playoffs. Everybody want to play. This is the time to shine. This is where you get paid at. Fin finally, Burke, his number gets called. Like, that's him being prepped and ready, prepared. That's making sure that he's doing what he's supposed to do inside the weight room, inside the conditioning, to come out doing shooting drills, game speed, like that, I know that's happening because I know that's Tibbs. I was under his tutelage at one time when I was in, in Boston. So I got a chance to see how he operated. So being able to see this guy get on the basketball court and play the way how he played with confidence, shooting the three-point shot from the corner, knocking it down, faking, ball faking, shooting pull-ups. Like that's like you've been already on the court hooping. And people say, oh, why wasn't he playing? You can't question that. This is the moment we needed him. We needed him for that moment, game five, when everybody's hurt and people looking around. And here comes Burke. He says, I have a cake too. <laughs> and it drives me bonkers, Stefan Marbury. And I'm glad what you said about Tom Thibodeau, because after game four, you have so many people, oh, his demanding coaching style has ruined this team and has forced all these injuries. And I'm watching it saying, He's exceeded all expectations. This guy has been so successful in New York, and it's wild to me how he doesn't get more national praise. I mean, he's not going to get national praise until he wins, and that's why it's so much push down. That's why we got to keep pushing up, and we keep pushing up, but now more and more of New York is starting to come together. See, it's easy to divide us, but now because the coach is changing, he's bringing in that college field, that Villa – that that Nova Knicks, you know what I'm saying? You start doing the Nova Knicks now. Now you have a college feel. You have the chemistry with Dante, with Hart, and Jalen. Those guys have a chemistry that you just can't disconnect. There's no breaking that. Like that formula is magical because they won at a level where you and I know college basketball is huge in America. That's the, that's a, that's a plateau, right? That's a plateau for some and some become famous and live on from being college players, let alone extending towards being in greatness in the NBA. Right. So that's a, that's a part that those guys are well familiar with. And by them winning at that level, they already understand that, uh, they understand the fanfare that comes with that, the fanatics that come with that. You know, they felt that. And at college, it's even with more enthusiasm because it's of their peers. You got what I'm saying? Opposed to sure. NBA, it's older people, it's different generations. But in college, it's just that. It's the seniors and the freshmen. And that's impactful. You got to go to college to feel that like and understand that. And a lot of guys, some guys that went to the NBA, they got to just understand adult life. You got what I'm saying? They didn't get a chance to grow. And some people need that. But these guys, they they have that. And now with, with, with Leon and Wes, what they're putting together, they're putting together a nice nucleus. And you can see it inside of the garden. It has beautiful light watching this. I will follow this. I will pay money to be a season ticket holder to watch that type of basketball along with the mixture. Yes, Jalen will grow. He will learn more about getting up off the ball at certain, situ certain situations. He's still young in his career, right? He's growing into his superstardom. Yes, Dante will play with more toughness. Last night, I feel like he played a better game last night than the game that he played where he had 35-something points. I Let feel me like his, his energy was, it was through the roof. Stefan Marbury here with us. Let me ask you about Dante DiVincenzo because I loved what he said after the game and he was getting into it uh, with the Pacers and he said, hey, that team, they're trying to be tough guys. Do you kind of see that when you watch Indiana? They're trying to be someone they're not? 
it doesn't matter. They were on the road. They were losing. They got they beat us bad one one night, and then we beat them in the daytime, and then we beat them bad at at nighttime. And now they're frustrated. They're they're mad, and they feel what they feel. It's okay. It's this is it's chatter. It's basketball. Neither one of those guys want to get fined big, big money for fighting. And they don't want to get kicked out for no game. So it's just like barking. Like, you know, then you put the dog right next to the other dog and then you don't hear nothing. And then you put it back and then they start barking. That's basically what that is. It's cool. Let's talk basketball. <laughs> well, well, how about how it's been with uh, watching those games with John Starks? Because I-, I love it. You guys have emotion just like your fans. You can't even get a handshake uh, down correctly last night. You're bumping into each other, just going nuts. How excited you guys are. Okay, so for me, my I'm laser sharp. I'm laser focused into the game. Every single play I'm watching. Me as a Knicks fan growing up here, before – this court was like I said. I, I got to keep saying that this court is where I dreamed about playing. Like, along with every other kid who who learns about Madison Square Garden. Once you learn about Madison Square Garden, you understand the 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 the, the beauty of it, the the fortune in it, the positive energy that's in it. Because everybody that goes inside of Madison Square Garden, they want to put on their absolute best. They don't want nothing else. They want to destroy Madison Square Garden. So you're getting that energy from all of the people that go to perform. So for me, seeing this, right, playing there, like I played high school. I lost two years in in high school, then finally won my senior year, then played college against Iverson, a classic, then played there with the Knicks. I know the noise. I understand it. Like I watched it, Bernard King, Rory, Rory Sparrow, <laughs> like all of the players, not not just Pat, like Tucker, everybody. Like I was one of those kids watching Bernard King get busy, right? Black and white TVs. I was that kid. So being there watching it and watching a guard do what it is that they're doing up close person and then I coached for four years so you know my coaching experience gave me more insight and un- understanding about the game so when I see that I'm like wow he's doing this with no athleticism like this is all skill based you know what I'm saying this is all work like on the ground work if he added jumping and dunking and all of that to his game it would be different but God is fair <laughs> Right, LeBron can't shoot free throws sometimes. He shoot air balls, <laughs> but LeBron, you know Brunson is doing the same things that LeBron did, and he's only six foot. He's six eight, two hundred and eighty. It's you know you see the difference. Like it's just different type of willpower. Well, last guard. Last thing I want to ask you before we talk about the, the shades, obviously with Camelo. Make sure you check it out. C H A M E L O dot com. Uh, do you think this is it for uh, Minnesota? They were up 2-0. Now they're down 3-2 in the series. They're going up against Joker and Murray. How do you kind of think this uh, series will play on out with Denver being up 3-2? Well, I'll tell you like this. You're playing against the champs. And when you're playing against the champs, you can't play good games. You have to play great games. Right. You winning by 25, 30 points against the champs, that doesn't phase them. They know what they did wrong. Right. If they lose by that much, they know what they did wrong. Right. When they win, they know what you did wrong. And now, right now, you got to basically knock them out. So when you play against the Joker, a guy who's won MVP three years in a row, the most skilled big man to ever touch a basketball the joker i said it whenever you play against a player like that and then you have the supporting cast you have to make sure when you play against them you make no mistakes and a mistake can be getting too high right and now when you lose on your court and then you got to go back to their court when you beat them on their court, you got to re- try to reduplicate that. But the thing is, they made the adjustment on your court. <laughs> so, 
So it's going to be a different series. It's going to be different. So we, we got to wait and see. All righty, Stefan Marbert, before we let you run, I love the shades. You've been rocking them all throughout the postseason. I've been seeing your courtside celebrating the Knicks. The floor is yours. Tell me about them. Well, Camelo is a new state-of-the-art glasses. It's the next wave of the future. These glasses, when you turn them on and off, they could go from light to dark. You can see my eyes. Yeah. Right? And then now you can't. And then you can have audio. You can have Bluetooth. You can have... Um, you know, the music plan from your phone. So you don't have to use AirPods anymore, right? If you got to talk on the phone, you can talk right on the phone with your sunglasses. So if you're at the beach chilling out, you don't got to go pick your phone up and put it on your phone. You can keep your phone in your bag. It don't get hot anymore. And then burn. And then, you know, you got to put your phone down. Your phone <laughs> is getting hot. That's done. That's over with. Them days is over with. All you're doing is talking to Siri. And then eventually the advanced way to have the technology with the inside of the glasses. But this is the first part of doing something that is revolutionary, is different. Um, and it's something that would, you know, you know, people would, would gravitate towards. We have all different kinds. We have some kinds where, you know, you can touch the glasses and they have different colors. It's for girls. It's not just for men. So you can touch the, the, the you can touch and tap and it'll go from pink to orange to wow. blue. Yeah, so, you know, people can go and check it out on Camelo.com, C-H-A-M-E-L-O, Camelo.com. Once again, that's www.chamelo.com. He's Stefan Marbury. Stefan, this is great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, thanks for having me.